Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed Habib. Welcome to the, I'm a psychotherapist and a former youth worker. And I've been working with people for over, for over 20 years in, in I call myself humanistic. And this is our second training of community training part two. So um, here we go. So what is mental health? Mental health is all encompassing terms that refers to emotional and psychological well-being. The definition of mental health policy is that it is, it is a positive state of mind, body, and feeling safe and able to cope with sense of connection to, to people, environment, and the by, uh, community, and the wider environment. So this is, this is basically feeling. Um, the best way I can describe this is a, is a motto that I, normally, that I normally use. As long as you try your best, you are the best, and the best that you can be yourself. So as long as you, you're able to feel you can be yourself, and you can give back to the, to the society and the community, and you have good relationship with those around you, um, that means, and you're more importantly, you know, whatever does come, that's going to afflict you, you're able to cope with it to the best of your abilities. Black and Asian minority and ethnic BME status. Um, so in England and Wales, nearly fifth of the, uh, fifth of the people come from BME, black, Asian, minority and ethnic and ethnic background. Um, the, the, men, uh, the mental health BME community is important because people from these communities often face individual and societal challenges that can affect access, uh, that can affect, that can affect access to health uh, and over an overwhelming and, and over an overall mental health and physical health. So basically means that there is these barriers um, for, for people who have ethnic minority to have the access that they need or they need be met accordingly. So these are th this is why it's very important for BME people, for BME people to kind of like um, for, for, for our mental health to be to be out there and to be seen as well. Um, what, what are the factors influencing the mental health of BME communities? So the important the important influence of BME communities, mental health. So what are the what are the factors that um, that has impact on us on our mental health? So the the the, the biggest one that comes up is racism and discrimination. Um, so this this is important, especially as Black people, we we do face a lot of that, um, and is is something that is always there. Sometimes it's so much out there that you normalize it, and and that is quite difficult. Um, Society and economic inequalities. Um, so if you look at inequalities, even those who are successful still have to have to kind of like uh, uh, go against certain barriers or discrimination, and even the pay the pay gap for for ethnic minorities compared to our to a white counterpart is not the same men and women. And mental health stigma, um, stigma is quite, is quite pandemic is when it comes to our communities. So we need to be, we need to speak a lot more about um, stigma and to make it more, 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 more like, uh, more like general. Uh, something that we can talk about with our families and everybody else, criminal justice system, this is when you look at it in the criminal justice system, majority of people, young people who are, who are in prison are, are, are black and yet we're only fifth of the population. It doesn't make sense. Something, something is, not, is not right there and other factors. Racism and discrimination. Uh, people from BME communities can experience racism in their personal lives ranging from from ranging from um, silence and slight remarks or um, hurtful comments and verbal or physical aggression 
research suggests that experiencing racism can be can be very can be very stressful and have and have a negative effect on our on on, on our overall uh, mental health. There is there is a growing body of research that suggests that, and those those exposed to racism may be more likely to experience mental health problems such as physical um, psychosis and depression. So again, this kind of um, this kind of shows um, if if we talk about um, racism has such a big impact on mental health. Um, proven with psycho um, like things like psychosis and depression. No wonder we have such a high uh, rate of detention when it comes to mental health. And so it's not surprising for me. This is one of out of all the research that I've done. This is one of the most surprising one. How racism um, really impact on our mental health, especially when it when you talk about detention rate. I knew when it comes to anxiety or depression or uh, when it comes to, in a sense of, um, you know, the challenges that we face every day, it kind of just brings to, to light the difficulties that we have to face as a, as a BME groups. Um, so uh, social and economic inequality. BME communities are also often faced with, um, you know, are often faced with discrimination in society. They are more likely to to experience poverty and have poor poor um, um, poor educational um, outcome, high high unemployment rates, and and, and 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 contact with criminal justice system, and they may face challenges accessing or receiving um, appropriate professional service. Each of, each of the uh, upcoming uh, uh, statistic, statistic can, can act as, as a risk factor for the, for the developmental of mental health. So when you, when you look at it, each of these things can be a catalyst for mental health. So, and when you look at the BME community, uh, who who amongst us that doesn't face in one or, or more of these or, or of these issues? You know, um, we talk about poverty. We talk about um, poor poor uh, academic, what you call it, attainment. Uh, we talk about unemployment um, and basically high, high rates of uh, basic criminal justice system. We talk about stop and search. Um, you know. We talk about basically, um, you know, kind of seeing, kind of seeing, you know, um, a lot of uh, a lot of young black men being in prison in a very young age. These these young people are supposed to be in prison, supposed to be looked after. So it is is not surprising when you see um, the statistics and the actual mental health and what we're going through, this just brings everything to home. Um, socioeconomic inequalities. Among 16 to 24 year old, unemployment rates are higher for people from black backgrounds, which is 26%, and from and from Pakistan and Bangladesh is 23%. And in comparison with our white counterpart, is 11%. So you can see um, even even with, with Bang, when you look at uh, Bangladeshi and Pakistani, black ethnic groups have higher unemployment rates. So the way I look at it, especially with young people, if they cannot find jobs and they're unemployed, is it surprising that they're going to get into mischief just to just to keep themselves occupied? I remember um, as a youth worker when the conservatives came in, I, I remember as all of us youth workers saying that the crime rate is gonna go up. Reason being is when we had youth clubs, a lot of young people we used to keep them in, we used to keep them occupied. And once that was gone, you know, there was a lot more young people just being outside and causing mischief. Um, one of the things I used to say is that youth workers were, 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 were basically ethnic minority counselors because we can sit with a young person for hours and discuss what's going on what's happening, we know their families, we know what's going on. We were there to kind of like be 
be the, the supporting role, the role model, um, the peer, um, the coach, the counselor. Once the youth clubs were closed, all of those facilities that youth workers used to pro provide was completely gone. So this is again the impact on 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 you know on all all of this social networking that's that's been closing. We're facing those those issues now. It's just ten years later. 20, 20 years later, these are this is the impact of what we, what, what we actually um, um, what the government are actually put in place. Even when when employed, men and women from from the same ethnic background are paid less on average than those from other groups. Uh, similarly, who who are similar who have the similar qualification experiences. So again, this is something I was just listening um, to LBC a couple of days ago. A lady who had um, who had, a, um, who had a place, who was working a company, she didn't say what the company was, and she she actually, uh, um, she was working for this place, she didn't get um, a basically uh, upgraded, she got another job, she went for another interview, she got another job, she came back to her placement and she said, you know what, this is, um, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the money that my, I'm going to get from the other company, can you guys match it? And they said, no, we can't. So they let her go. And guess what happened? An email came, uh, an email came that another um, white counterpart was gonna give, was gonna give it, was, they, they were gonna give her a job and she was gonna get the money that she asked for. Just mind boggling. And look at the reason what he's saying. So this is something that's happening every single time in our lives. And, you know, we, we kind of think is the norm. Again, we're gonna continue with the next slide. Um, social, um, social economics and inequalities. Pakistani and Bangladeshi community consistently have higher rates of poverty, as to uh, as to do with black, Chinese, and other ethnic minority. Homelessness is the key issue among and uh, minority ethnic groups, with with thirty seven percent of statutory homes uh, and household from BME backgrounds. Um, and this was 2003 research. So again, you know, the, the, you know, the truth is in the, the research. He says it all. You know, and um, you know, is that that thing is hard um, when you see the research in just kind of in 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 in, in this way. It's hard to separate mental health from life. You know, it, it is it basically is not something that comes out of nowhere. Everything around us has an impact, either negative or positive, and that shapes the way we see um, the world around us. Um, you know, I know, you know, we do not see the world as it is, but as we are. So it's everywhere that you go, if you have to work harder, you know, you have to, you, uh, and there's always things and obstacles that you have to overcome. You, you can, you can get burned out, and, and that burning out can, can cause, can cause chronic tiredness. You know, a chronic tiredness means that you're so tired, you're consistently tired because you burn yourself out, not physically, but mentally. Okay, so we're going to go to the next slide. Mental health stigma. The different different communities understand understand and talk about mental health in different in different way. Some some communities, mental health problems are rarely spoken about and can be and can be seen in a negative light this this can this, this can discourage people within the within the community from talking about their their mental health and may maybe maybe a a barrier to engaging with the, the services 100 percent so again um you know and you know talking talking about your mental health can can make you feel weak can make you feel like you're crazy sometimes the hardest thing to do is acknowledge our own weaknesses the hardest thing to do is kind of like facing our own our own fears you know that that is one of you know the biggest strides the biggest struggle that we can ever we can we can overcome is our own selves our biggest critic is our own self you know so um the stigma that is imposed upon us by society, by ourselves, it is just we are holding ourselves prisoners. And you know, saying to yourself, um, "I need help," it doesn't make us weak. Is the one of the strongest things that you can say to yourself. It's so empowering, and so uh, how do I say? 
um, it can actually give you that sense of freedom. You know, it's like you can accept yourself for who you are. And, and, and I think this is one of the things that we need to work in our communities and in, in within ourselves to kind of say it's okay to cry. It's okay to, um, to show vulnerability. You know, it's okay to kind of say, you know, I need help. And I think we need to overcome this. And until we give ourselves permission to feel that, it, we won't be able to give permission to others. And the criminal justice system, there is there's a growing concern over unmet mental health needs among BME individuals within the, the criminal justice system, particularly in the youth justice system. Uh, one, one 2016 report on, on, the, uh, on the youth justice system in, in England and well find 40% of children are from BME backgrounds and more, more than one, one third have, have, have diagnostic of mental health problem. The level of need may be, may be even greater than this. It is, it is, it is also been, it's also been found that BME individuals are less likely to have mental health, pro, uh, are less likely to have mental health problems or learning difficulty identified upon entry the justice system. Um, you know, working, uh, I, I worked in a, in a justice system um, and it's so true. It's like all, all, all the young people that have been incarcerated, I haven't seen one young person for me personally that I could, uh, that I could say hasn't had some kind of mental health issues or had not come from basically broken homes or had not had issues. They just... Um, and the highest, the highest young people that I've seen personally, um, the young people who came from, um, from uh, how do I say, um, who who've been adopted or haven't really had the, their parents living with them, they they they're from care. Though those are the highest young people. The other young people that I've seen, almost each young person that I've seen, majority of them had some kind of uh, hidden disability. For example, a lot of them had dyslexia, um, some kind of mental health disorder and disabilities. Um, there were um, some of them had um, had basically hidden um, disabilities. A lot, majority of them, and this is one of the most um, the most biggest thing that I saw when I went to prison, which was so eye-opening, when I saw those young people sitting there, I couldn't, I could see myself being, I could, I could have been any one of them, you know, because I could relate a lot of the things that they were struggling with, you know, came from a single parent, they, a lot of them came from a single parent, I'm dyslexic there as well, you know, being, uh, growing up, growing up in basically, in, in Southeast, you know, drugs used to be sold underneath my, the, the stairs, you know, all of those things that you, as a young man, you're, you're forced to navigate. But, you know, I realized that a lot of us that actually succeed, so sometimes I kind of felt like we were, we were the ones that were abnormal in a way, because it's so easy because when everything going against you in that kind of manner, it's very hard to succeed. So again, we need we need to show compassion and understanding to our own um, young people. Understand, and it's very hard. One of the hardest thing to to look at when you're working with um, with young people who are incarcerated, they're the victim and the victimizer. So it's very hard to kind of sometimes you're showing empathy because you can see where they come from, but at the same time, they have caused harm to innocent young people you know and it's very hard to balance that as well but at the end of the day throwing the key and and saying we don't want to look at it, it when they come back what they're going to they're going to cause the same harm same problem so i guess it's beneficial for us as a society to able to help those young people and to for them to live a, 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 a richer life in a way other factors Many groups face inequalities in, in physically and mental and mental health. This can be this can be due to factors like disability, sexuality, gender, age. In order to understand different and different BME community experiences, experiences of mental health problems and and of services providers, it it, it is 
it is it is also it is also necessary to consider those other aspects in addition to the race and ethnicity i guess is what we just covered just now is is very much important to look at all of the different aspects um that each each individual young person that's going through um including racism and you know and, and marginalization i think it's very important to kind of look at it as a wider problem not as, as a singular issue and we do and i guess i guess you know it's very easy to kind of to kind of say we're being discriminated we're um you know we are marginalized it's very easy i think we kind of you can put an umbrella and cover and cover everything but it's, it's a lot more complicated because we're all individual we individual life and individual challenges and we all have uh, a story and the challenges that we need to face and we need to that needs to be catered for as an individual we talk about equality what the meaning of equality exactly what's the meaning of equality is um seeing and treating person an individual with individual needs so each one of us we're individual but we're equal and uh, we're equal but we have individual and um, basically needs so when you talk about exams uh somebody might need them um, who has a wheelchair has a different need to somebody who's like me with dyslexia uh, or, or somebody who's actually um how do i say might need extra time somebody might need a, 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 a reader and a scriber somebody might need basically a laptop because they cannot write properly so we need to able to look at it as individual the needs that we need each person that come across us we don't put a blanket on it we need to look at it each person that comes across and we meet as an individual and have an open mind when we work in with people breaking down bme groups different bme groups may be more likely to face particular mental health um, concern it is important to note however that our our understanding of mental health concept is limited by the quality of data we collect exactly that 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 is that is so so right and i'm you know when i look at data there's so many things that i have seen in my last 20 years that and i think that um it hasn't been really put a um put a, a light upon and you know and, and data needs to catch up on uh, especially when it comes to ethnic minorities and and more and, and you know when it comes to data collection and talking about vulnerability and how we feel and what's going on in our personal life it's very hard to put that into um into evaluation or paper or or data um because it, it, because you don't want that data to be used against you and i can understand that but again there's a there's another side there's another flip side of data if if our data can be collected um in a positive manner it can help us um understand the challenges that we're going through as well but i guess it comes under stigma we're not willing to acknowledge um our mental health and our challenges because it's is something personal i'm talking about your personal life and things that you go through um is quite um is quite daunting sometimes so it's understandable that there's a lot more data to be collected black slash african caribbean and black british people and p a p a p m s and founded that black black men were more likely more likely than other white counterparts to experience psychotic disorder in the last in in the last year and the risk of uh, the risk of psychosis in in black caribbean groups is is um um black caribbean group is especially uh, is nearly seven times higher the, higher than than the white and than the white population the 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 impact the impact of high high rates of mental illness is is that people people from these groups are more likely than average to to encounter mental health services um detention rate under the mental health at uh, the mental health uh the mental health during 2017 and 2018 were four times higher for people in the in the black or black british groups than than those in the white count, uh, than those in the white groups um what are the experience that i see regarding this 
um, is that a lot of youngsters, um, when I see, especially males, um, you know, when they don't they don't try to deal with the emotions or or kind of face the the issues, they use substance um, to kind of deal to cope with the with, with their mental health, and this can can accelerate your your mental health as well. That thing a lot of young people kind of have that when you when you have substance misuse, especially when it comes to weed, um, they they think that um, it doesn't really affect their mental health, and and it's not true. It actually accelerates your mental and, and decreases your mental health quite fast. And this is becoming quite norm right now for 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 our youngsters to kind of to kind of misuse. And substance misuse and, and, and use a lot more than necessary just to find a, a way of coping with, with, with reality. Let me go to the next one. Okay, um, black slash African Caribbean and black British people. Um, count me in census which, which collected information on, on patient care, found it high, higher than average admission, detention rate for black for black groups in, in for black groups in in every year since 2006 to 2010 black men black men were, were were reported to have higher rate higher rate of drugs use and and drugs and dependency than than other groups um that uh, that one I, I really I wasn't I was surprised by you know to kind of say that and black people had more higher rates of and drug dependency. I guess that's research, but I can understand why why drugs can can actually have a big impact on um, on mental health. Especially as I said before, um, at the moment, a lot of our youngsters when we when when they're smoking, basically, um, substance when they do substance, especially with weed. And at the moment, there's so many chemicals in there. It's, they're not smoking weed at the moment. It's just it's just another thing. It's completely different. The smell of it um, is so, so, so strong. It's unbelievable because what's happening now with every single year uh, or every single time what's happening is that they want to have something that can get them high so quickly. And so the chemicals that they put in there is so toxic, it actually changes their brain. Um, and I'm not surprised um, that that's having a gentlemental effect compared to when I was growing up. It was just there wasn't so many chemicals whenever people smoked weed. It was it was like uh, it was more pure. But right now, I don't know what they're smoking. It's completely and every everyone when they when you buy something from the street, everybody wants to make money. So what they do is they they, they put in chemicals. Um, but so they can make a lot of money out of it. So, and as I said before, a lot of youngsters don't believe that having and uh, smoking weed have ha has any effect on their mental health. So I guess is that is a conversation that we need to have with our youngsters um, to kind of make them understand that how this actually can impact the emotions. It can numb their it can numb their brain, slow um, slow their brain down. Um, they will find it difficult concentrate, uh, concentrating, um, and a lot of the time, um, I, a lot of youngsters start when um, when they when they start moving out from home or going to university. Um, they don't have their parents basically guiding there, and that's when they start you when they start having experimenting and doing all of these things. And I see a lot of youngsters going to university and not finishing because of substance misuse. So we need to keep an eye. On our youngs, especially now. Asian, Asian, Asian British people. The last, the last AP APMS found no found no me, me, measurable difference between Asian people and their and their white counterparts. Count me um, in in the terms of experience in psych, psychotic disorder or or, or common common mental health problems. People people of Indian and Pakistani origin show high high level of mental well being than, than other ethnic groups. 
as as did those of African Caribbean. So compared to Indian and Pakistani, um, compared to black ethnic groups, they show better mental health, uh, basically resilience. Suicide through um, suicide thoughts were less common in Asian people uh, than the white counterparts. Um, as as well as well uh, as was the as well, as was the likelihood of self harming and uh, self harming behavior, um, though those identified as Asian or Asian bitches are are, are one one third less likely to be in in contact with mental health or learning learning disability services. Again, this could be this could be because of um, this could be because of cultural reasons, um, because of um, you know again in different cultures, uh, if somebody has disability or they're taken to, uh, they 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 signed off a disability, they, they the community might frown upon. Um, this this could be because of mental health is still not um, not something that is is very much discussed openly. Um, so there could be many reasons why why the research is coming. Uh, it actually says this. So again, is some of the things that you need to take with a pinch of salt, um, and actually recognize that um, in in when you look at Pakistani or or Indian origin, they're very much um, very much like a um, community orientated. But that being said. There's other statistic that actually goes against that. Um, when you look at uh, when you look at Bangladeshi community, um, the, the one of the highest is it ha uh, highest um, if I'm not if I'm not wrong is to do other mental health or suicide is is related to women. So again, you know there is you always have to take with a pinch of salt what the statistics say about it. Within the Asian Asian community in England and Wales. The research has indicated that the older Asian, um, the older South Asian women seem to be seem to be at, as risk group for suicide. One 2018 review found that non-European immigrants women, women included in, in, including young young South South Asian women were high high risk group for suicide attempts. Find found. Finding from from the from the last from the last um, count me in census found found that the number of people in the in in the in the Asian or Asian British groups rose by rose by approximately nine percent from two thousand and five to two thousand and ten. So what 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 he's saying actually is that from two and um, the census and um, the census count me in um, actually shows that the role that the rise of or basically um of, of south asian women has risen by nine percent again as we said the census always says different depending how you look at it it can say different stuff and different things but again and one of the things that you have to look at it when it comes to women in um, in south asian they were a lot of them will come in the country quite um, not speaking the language, the, the, the environment's quite new. Um, they're living with the with the in-laws. They don't have that space to to actually be themselves. Um, they're facing a lot of challenges. They're missing their family. They need their family as well. So this, um, when you look at this kind of like um, research, and you look at somebody how they're living and what were and the impact they could have in their culture you can see how where all of these impact is coming from. Again, as we said before, culture awareness is very important. People speaking or dealing with people from their own ethnic group, there's so many unspoken that can come out that a person can understand why this person is going through what they're going through. Um, the person or the client, if the person is therapy, doesn't need to explain a lot they can understand the unspoken, the subconscious, and it will be easier. A client, a counselor can work with anyone, but it's easier when a client can work with somebody from the ethnic background. But sometimes that can be um, a setback as well. So if somebody who's 
who's basically trying to explore about their religion. Um, it's very hard to speak to somebody who's from the same background religion. They might feel like they're being judged as well. So again, it's not, it's not one fits all as well. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay, um, there's some studies, there's some studies that show suggest the prevalence of mental health illness, mental health illness, both common mental health and problems and and psychotic illnesses is is low low amongst Chinese Chinese people than than white counterparts. Chinese people are under underrepresented in mental health services. Rates of rates of detention to to mental health and inpatients and inpatient in in England and Wales were were lower among Chinese population compared to the national average. Further research is required to to explain whether this is because the community experiences better mental health than than the general population or if they, they experience specific barriers to accessing mental health. Um, and I guess that, that can be said with, um, that can be said with anyone, isn't it? Um, there's still high, what you call it, stigma um, related to mental health and being diagnosed. You know, again, you know, a lot of people that I, I meet, um, one of the things they, um, they ask me is that, and is, is my information gonna be passed to the GP? Is um, who's gonna know about my information? Uh, is my employer gonna know about my information? You know, these are some of the things that a lot of people are concerned. And I think they need to be more um, top down kind of like, uh, or up, up down kind of like um, normalization of mental health. Um, because at the moment, I think in, a, you know, some employers, even though the statutory protection for people to be to be protected when it comes to mental health, um, as we said, the research that we've done before, people mental health are twice more likely to be to lose their job than, than when you don't suffer from mental health. So you can understand the stigma and the, and being afraid to put yourself out there is something which is real. It's not just a stigma issue, but it can it can affect you financially, emotionally. So I guess we need to. Then the, the, the government needs to put a lot more awareness and they're doing a lot, but I think a lot more needs to be done. Other ethnic groups, Irish people live in UK have much higher, much higher um, hospitalized admission rate for mental health problem than other ethnic groups. They have high rates of depression and alcohol problems and alcohol problems and are at, at greater risk of suicide. Um, again, remember what we said um, when we started about the NHS, one of the, one of the second highest, um, um, the second highest, um, um, the second highest illness, illness in, uh, in NHS is mental health issues. The first is alcohol and addiction. So, and again, Alcohol. A lot of people will we will drink alcohol to kind of like um, um, to kind of drown the emotions. So alcohol is not really the problem, the underlying problem. There's another underlying problem why people drink alcohol and 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 misuse alcohol. Again, it's something that it cannot be seen as a separate issue, but it can be dealt as a separate issue. But again, if there isn't, and if the person does not get support holistically. Um, to, to be helped with the alcohol addiction and then help with the, the emotional addiction, help with the whatever issue that's going on at home, these issues are still gonna go in. And I think we need to we need to have a holistic um an holistic way of dealing with mental health uh, and, and having community-based health care um which is which targets and uh, what you call a prevention than just dealing with the cure. And because at the moment we're just dealing with um, with the cure, but I guess I guess is that they're trying to change the situation. But I don't see how that can happen when the badge of NHS is being cut. So again, it's very um, it's double-edged sword. Somali census statistic. 
roughly roughly a third of the respondents said they had personal experience of mental health issue, but only about half of those said they had they had source they have source help for the issues. Young people do not immediately name a problem with accessing services services designed as as a reason they had not sought help. Parents' experience of mental health services was mixed. Somali um, Somali census. Um, Somali Somali people show great awareness of mental health issues, uh, mental health issues than their than their parents. Somali young people show great awareness of mental health issues than their parents. When given possible reason, most most respondents said the stigma had stopped them or delayed or discouraged from, from getting treatment a lot. Young people did not mention, um, they did not mention, uh, the mention, young people mentioned concern about shame and a, a reluctance to discuss private or personal matters. This is completely um, understandable, especially in our community where we're taught not to talk about your family, your parent, you know, there's the, a the sense of loyalty. It's something that is ingrained that you, we keep um, the private matters of our family to ourselves. So when it comes to counseling and talking about what's happening at home, you automatically, um, people automatically kind of feel like they're betraying their parents or they're going against um, the core belief or what's been the culture would be raise that so this sense of feeling um, reluctance and then you add that the stigma of mental health you you can understand the conflict where young people were kind of like um going through so there's a there's a sense of what they know and what they believe what they're culturally um what they know about schools and society and what's home what's home being actually at home what they've been taught that that sense of conflict is where the sense of um, discouragement, the sense of, um, and they don't want to discuss personal matters came from. Um, especially, especially um, specific and, and trauma, trauma experiences of, of many Somali parents and the cause of civil war in, in Somalia and the, and the journey and, and the journey as refugee added an additional complex to the situation. Somali community is diverse in which some some are well informed on mental health mental health matters to do with mental health and other and um and uh, um and some are less so there are there are people of all ages and position within the somali community who who are keen to talk about their their communities and experiences around mental health and want to take action and this was quite poignant when we're doing the research because of we had we had community leaders from all ages who came in, which surprises me. We had parents that talk about um, the, um, the difficulty of not having translation or not understanding psychology, um, difficulty of um, not having representative people from their own community who they can relate to, and misunderstanding of culture. Uh, all of these issues of um, with parents and not understanding what therapy really is and how it works, that really complicates a lot of issues with the parents, um, with parents. 